You're live. Well, good morning. I'm Brother Monty Dinwiddie, the Sunday School Director at Burningville Baptist Church, and I want to welcome you this morning to God's Word. Each Sunday we do a devotion for Sunday School, and today will be our first live broadcast on this. We are in session six of our Sunday School books, and it's entitled Eternal Life. And the point is, is that we can live forever in the presence of God. There's no word in the Bible but that can be disproved. But I also want to get your mind set to this, is that so many times when people think about eternal life, they're at a funeral. They're at a graveside of the cemetery. And they hope that their friend or their loved ones actually made it into heaven. Heaven and hell is real. Heaven is a place that God prepared for us. And he not only prepared it for us, but he promised it to us. And I want to read today with you, you out of the uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 11. We're going to read verses 8 through 16. So many people avoid the topic of death. But so many people know that there is a heaven. They know. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that know there's a heaven and has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They've never placed their faith in God. And that's where it's at. Faith in God. Through Jesus Christ. That is the only way that we can expect to spend eternal life in heaven. To be there forever. So I want to read to you out of Hebrews chapter 8 or chapter 11, excuse me, verses 8 through 16. This is the faith of the patriarchs. God's word says this, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, Dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaiah and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful, who had promised. Therefore sprang her even of one, and him as a good as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. We all are. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of the, that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country. I want you to listen to that word, desire. But now they desire a better country, that is, in heavenly, Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city that is a promise from God. They have desire. I've entitled this this morning, Desiring a Heavenly Home. I want to tell you as children of God, our citizenship is in heaven. I also want to tell you, for those that have not had faith in God and trusted in the name of Jesus Christ and accepted Him as Lord and Savior, God's intent is that your citizenship for eternal life is in heaven, without question. Amen. You ask how I can say this, I can read to you Philippians 3 and 20. It says, for our conversation is in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So as Christians, our true home is heaven. 
Sometimes our desires, they tether us to the here and the now. And you know, our desires to be married, to have children, to have grandchildren, to have great and excellent careers, to have a beautiful home, to travel, all those things are good and great things. And we can have all those things. But we don't need to let those desires tether us to this earth. Those patriarchs that came before us did not have a desire to stay in this earth. They knew that God had promised to them a better city. And that better city speaks in reference to heaven. God promised them. But I want you to also understand that the Bible challenges us to focus on things above. Yes. You know, in the times now that we can't come together and assemble in the house of God, the body of Christ still needs to exude who Jesus Christ is. Yes. The body of Christ needs to make sure that people understand that God promised heaven. Without question, Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, If ye then be, then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ set it on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. God's calling us into his presence by all of this. God prepared a place for us to go. If we prepare and do all the things necessary to go on vacation and travel to a great place with a family. We've done a lot of work, and that is truly a great accomplishment. But in the end, we truly expect to travel, go to that great place, get great photos, have great memories with our family that we can share in all the good things later in life. But listen, God's plan is even greater than that. He went and prepared for us a place, a city, yes. a heavenly city. And God's expectation is that we come to be with him for eternity. Amen. That's eternal life. And it only comes through the good graces of our Father. You know, when we set our affections on things above, we can start to focus on the unseen benefits of heaven just like these patriarchs did. Revelation 22, verses 3, 4, and 5, it talks about God's enduring presence. It says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and forever. God's word promises to us unending rest in Hebrews 4 and 9. It says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. That means we will have an unending rest forever and ever. 1 Peter 1 4 says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faith not away, reserved in heaven for you. Again, eternal life is an everlasting inheritance through Christ. You know, recently I, I read something about how that believers desire that heavenly inheritance. And when I opened up talking about how that people think more about eternal life and heaven and stuff at funerals and at grave sites, this kind of came to my mind when we talk about believers desiring a heavenly inheritance. We all want to know that our loved ones made it to heaven. We want to know, but sometimes we want to know only when we get to the funeral. Yeah, we have some desires along the way, but that's when its greatest impact is there. But now you need to focus on you and where you're going to be. You know, that according to God's word, he promised that he prepared a city for us individually, every one of us. I submit to you as believers in Christ, the stronger that our faith is, the more fervent the desire will be in our heart to look to that heavenly promise 
of being there with God for forever and ever. Abraham, he was the friend of God. God called him friend. But he illustra illustrates in this passage here the desire, his desire for heaven. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. For he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. <coughs> no other do you hear of preparing for us a place other than God. Said he sojourned, his sojourn was that of a traveling foreigner who by faith sought an eternal city constructed by God. There's several Old Testament believers that are mentioned here in Hebrews 11 that they had a very strong faith in God and it enabled them to be able to embrace God's promises before they ever received them. They knew that God promised and that God was faithful and that God would deliver them as long as they had faith in Him. But in verse 16 here, I want to focus on this. It said, but now they desire a better country. They knew God promised it. And they had faith in God. They trusted God. And God saved them through many, many things. And I can speak for a long time on that. But the point here is, is that they had faith in God. And because God promised and God had taken care of them when they were faithful to him, now they had a greater desire for a better country. That is a heavenly country. Amen. God had them in a great place. And they continued to, to live in faith. But they desire to be in that better country, a heavenly country, where for God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he had prepared for them a city. They did never lose the faith in that. They, they trusted that. They knew without a doubt there was truly a heaven. And so there's so many people that knows there's a heaven that's not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They don't have eternal life secured for them in heaven. So many people say, yeah, I know there's a heaven, but I just don't understand all of this. You know, when we talk about the lack of understanding, it's not that we understand because we were seeking God, because I tell you, there's examples throughout God's Word where people would seek God, and God would send somebody in their path and cause them to realize the gospel of Jesus Christ, introduce them to Jesus, and they accepted Jesus. So it's not that we don't understand because we lack calling on God. We don't understand because we don't call on God. I read this and it's anonymous, but I want to share it with you because one person put it this way. Many things in the Bible I cannot understand. Many things in the Bible I only think I understand. But there are many things in the Bible I cannot misunderstand. Amen. I wish I could give credit to the person that wrote that, but it's listed as anonymous. But let me say to you that it's true that there's many things in God's Word that we cannot misunderstand. We cannot misunderstand that it is God's desire that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 19. We cannot misunderstand what Jesus said in John 14, 6. He said, he said unto them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. We can't misunderstand what Jesus says in Revelation 3 and 20. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. We cannot misunderstand what Acts 17 and 31 says. Here it says, Because he, he being God, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. We cannot misunderstand that if we trust God, he will give us a desire for that heavenly country, just like he did the patriarchs here in Hebrews chapter 11. And I promise you, it will cause you to start loosening your grips on this world. It will cause you to start praying and seeking God. Call on God. So many people say, well, I'm a sinner, and God don't look upon sin. Let me tell you, if you're lost, and you pray and ask God 
Teach me about Jesus Christ. Teach me about the Savior that you sent to me. God will put somebody in your life. God will cause you to understand. God hears the cry of the lost. Yeah. That's right. God hears the cry of the lost. Don't say that I misunderstand that I can't talk to God because God can't look up on sin. And the Bible says that we're all born into sin and all of sin comes short of the glory of God. The grace of God, the love of God, God's mercy will hear your cry and God will put somebody in your path. You have to have the desire. Yes. Everyone has within what God created in us is, is a desire for that heavenly home. You can't say you don't know God in some way or another because God created you in his image. We all have a right to that promise from God of eternal life. So we cannot misunderstand. We are promised heaven only if we put our faith in God. And God through the Holy Spirit will lead us to Christ. Don't be afraid to talk to someone you know that is saved. Don't think that any excuse of you dodging except in Jesus Christ as your Savior will get you through judgment day and into heaven. Like I read earlier in John 14, 6, no one comes to the Father but by, by me, Jesus Christ said. Amen. He is the light. Yes. He is the truth. God's only Son. You know, for the Christian, heaven is spelled H-O-M-A. Yes. That's right. Home. Amen. I love you all, and I pray that God's word has spoke to your heart this morning. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you because you first loved us. Father, we thank you for the Savior that you gave to us. Father, you knew all things. You knew we needed a Savior. Father, we're in a pandemic now. Father, you know all things about this. Father, we pray for the world this day. Asking you, Father, to heal this land. Looking to you, Father, for every answer. And yes, Father, we try to understand and we try to find the answers. But I pray, God, that every person in this world will understand that you have an open ear. And you're, you will always hear those that cry out, see you through Christ. Father, thank you for the promise of that heavenly country. Thank you for the promise of eternal life with you. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll be back live at 11 o'clock for our, our service or, or thereabouts, so be watching for that, and we'll be back online here in a couple minutes. We'll get everything set up. Thank you for watching.